Are you in the process of making offers on homes and wondering what sellers look for in those offers? Are you in a competitive market against multiple offers and wondering how to make your offer stand out? Well, in today's video, we're gonna dive into that in more detail. We're gonna talk about what sellers look for in offers, how they compare offers one versus the other, and then we're also going to give you some tips if you're planning on making an offer, how to make your offer stand out. My name is Jeb Smith. I'm a real estate broker here in Southern California, and I deal with a lot of buyers as well as a lot of sellers. And on the seller side, I help sellers review offers. I help them look at things that are important in those offers to help them in making decisions. And in today's video, we're going to go over those things with you to help you understand how sellers look at those so that hopefully it helps you in making a more competitive offer. We're also going to talk about how that translates into the buying side. As I mentioned earlier, at the end of this video, we're going to give you some tips, some tricks, if you will, some house hacking in order to help your offer stand out. Now, I use the same information that I gained from sellers when reviewing offers to help my buyers in making offers. And we're headed into another competitive housing market in 2022. So if you're planning on buying a house, it's important that you keep these things in mind when making an offer. Now, before we dive into the actual content of this video, I wanna be upfront. I'm not gonna tell you that you need to waive all your contingencies or that you need to do some sort of crazy escalation clause in order to have your offer stand out amongst everybody else. We're gonna see how you can use a combination of these things, how sellers review all of these in order to make their decisions. And the very first thing they look at, as you might imagine, is purchase price, right? How much you're offering on that property. Now, price is one thing, but it's not the only thing. But you can't be way under everyone else typically speaking, and expect your offer to get accepted. So you need to be competitive in how you write your offer, which means that you need to have your agent review the comps. You need to take a look at those comps and make informed decisions on that purchase price. But price is important. You can't go in in a competitive market and think that you're going to get a deal, especially when you're competing against multiple offers. The next thing that sellers look at is the escrow term. The escrow term is how many days is your escrow. Now, a lot of people reach out and say, well, what does that actually mean? It means from the time your offer gets accepted, how long the period of your contract is going to be. Typically speaking, it's somewhere around 30 days. There's no set time period, but traditionally speaking, it's somewhere around 30 days. The shorter your time period, in some cases, can make your offer stand out. Now, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more as we talk about things that you can do in order to strengthen your offer. But if you're making a competitive offer, you don't want to offer some really long time period. You know, Asking 60, 90 days in a competitive market is not going to help your offer stand out unless that's something that the seller wanted to see in that offer to start. Now, the third thing that sellers review when looking at offers is the type of loan. And you might be saying, why do they care about the type of loan? The money is the same at the end of the day. As long as the loan closes, who cares what type of loan it is? Well, loan is also going to translate into down payment, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, but there are a couple of loan programs out there when looking at it on paper, don't look as competitive as say a conventional offer putting 20% down. So if you're using an FHA loan or a VA loan and it's a competitive market and there's multiple offers and you have someone doing a conventional loan, then the seller might not take your offer as serious as someone doing a conventional loan because those people are putting more money down. Now, maybe you're in a position where that's the only type of loan program you can do. You don't have another option. FHA is your only option. As we get into the items that you can you know, change a little bit in order to help your offer stand out, you, we can talk about some of the things that you can do to help sweeten your offer, even if you're using FHA or VA. But the end of the day, if that is the loan program that you're using, you know, you need to have your agent, and that's one of the things we're gonna talk about, talk to the agent on the other side, have your lender talk to the agent on the other side in order to help them know how qualified you are, how well qualified you are, because that can also help your offer stand out. And we're gonna dive into that in a little bit more detail. But they're gonna look at purchase price, as I mentioned, they're going to look at escrow term, the type of loan that you're using, which is essentially going to translate into also looking at the down payment. Now, if you have 10 offers and they're all putting the same amount down or putting relatively the same amount down, 
really not a big deal. But if you have someone putting you know, a substantially larger down payment, or in some cases they're paying cash, and all things are equal across the board, they might look at that offer with a higher down payment as a more competitive offer. Because to a seller, someone putting more down payment typically means they're more qualified. Now that doesn't actually have to be true. The person putting more down could actually have a way higher debt to income ratio, could be you know, just on the border of actually qualifying, whereas the person putting less money down might actually be a more qualified buyer, might actually have more money in the bank and just choosing not to use it. So it's not always 100% you know, accurate when a seller says, hey, the person putting more money down is the most qualified. And again, we're going to talk about how to help you stand out if you are putting less money down. But that is something that the sellers are going to review. The next thing they're going to look at is contingency timeframes. Now, contingencies are how much time you have to do certain things in the contract before your earnest money, your escrow deposit is at risk. Now, here in the state of California, we have seven contingencies on the contract at the moment. There could be eight if you actually have a property to sell, but things like a loan contingency, you have time to get your loan approved, an appraisal contingency, you have time to have an appraisal completed on that property, a home inspection contingency, reviewing the HOA docs, reviewing the seller disclosures, reviewing the preliminary title report. These are all things that you are typically doing when buying a house and these contingency time frames you know give you time to to do those items here in the state of California it's 17 days you have 17 days for your longest contingency in order to you know tell the seller whether or not you're moving forward with purchasing that home and if you decide not to you can get your earnest money back but if you decide to move forward you have 17 days to do it now there can be cases where it goes a little bit longer but you know what sellers are looking at in in the market that we're in and likely as we head into 2022 is you know if there's multiple offers the person with the shorter contingency periods you know if they say instead of doing 17 days we're going to shorten everything down to 10 days well that helps your offer stand out assuming your offer is competitive on all the other fronts you know your purchase price is similar to the others your down payment your loan program your escrow term all those things are similar the person with the shorter contingency periods their offer might stand out a little bit and you might say why why does it matter well the quicker you get past those contingency periods and sign them off the seller has a better idea of whether you're moving forward with the purchase of that property or not if you have a longer contingency period, essentially you have more time to drag out the, the inspection periods or the loan contingency or the appraisal or what have you. And you have you know a longer time to decide whether or not you want to cancel. And the seller at the end of the day wants to get through that period as quickly as possible because they might be buying another home. They might be waiting to do something on their end until they get past that contingency period on the sell of their home. So the quicker they get past it, the better off they are and Again, it can help your offer stand out during that process. Another thing the seller is going to look at when comparing offers is are you asking for things in the contract? Are you asking for things like termite section one clearance? Here in the state of California, we have termites in properties and a clearance is when they you know, take care of any termites on those properties. They remediate, they do any work that's associated with that and some buyers ask that as part of the original contract. Another thing, they might ask for a home warranty on the property, you know, for, for the first year of that property, asking the seller to pay for that. Other things might be asking for closing costs. A buyer might be asking for closing costs. In this market, it's a little bit more difficult. I have seen it happen, but asking for things like closing costs might hurt you in making an offer in this market, unless you're in an environment where, you know, that is typically what people are doing. Another thing, you know, asking for the washer and dryer, asking for the refrigerator as part of your original offer. If no one else is doing that and you are, and the seller is planning on taking it, they might, instead of counter, they might just say, you know what, we're just gonna go with one of the other offers. We don't even wanna deal with countering on that. So asking for certain things in the contract up front could actually hurt you in the negotiation process. Now that we have an idea of what the sellers are looking for when, when comparing offers, you know, when you're writing an offer, what the sellers are actually reviewing and what they're taking in consideration, we're gonna take a minute and talk about some things that you can do in order to help your offer stand out. But before we do that, I wanna ask a favor. If you found any value in this content so far, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. It does help more people see it. It helps the algorithm, helps the video gain a little bit of traction. So I would appreciate if you could do that. And if you 
want to see more information like this, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. So the very first thing we're going to do when making offers on a property is we're going to have your agent call the listing agent on the other side and ask them what's important to the seller. Now you might ask, well, why would I do that? Why do I care what's important to the seller? All they care about is price. All they care about is getting the most money out of the property. That's not always true. And in many cases, there are things you can do to help your offer stand out. You know, if the seller is looking for a shorter escrow and you're in a position to do that, you might come in and make a shorter escrow. Or you might find out that, hey, the seller is asking for, you know, a 30 day rent back on the property. And maybe that's something you don't want to consider, but maybe you want to help your offer stand out. And that's something you put in your original offer when making it, because again, it could help your offer stand out. So the very first thing you, you want to do is have your agent call the agent on the other side to find out if they can get any information from the seller to find out what's important. You never know what they say that you could do in your offer in order to help it stand out. Now, I will say when doing this, it's very important that you're working with a professional real estate agent, somebody that understands the business, knows how to write a contract. I know that sounds crazy, but there's a lot of agents out there that don't do contracts correctly. You know, they're sloppy, they miss certain things, and that can hurt you in the process. If I'm a listing agent and I'm reviewing offers, and you know there's some that are professionally completed and then there's one that even if it's the highest price but it's sloppy chances are i'm going to try to to advise my client um, how to navigate that process i'm going to point that out because you know at the end of the day the worst thing is getting into escrow with an agent on the other side that doesn't know how to do their job that's not professional you know it can waste time it could end up causing the transaction not to close so at the end of the day you want a professional on that side so if you do need a professional, do me a favor. There's a link in the description below. Can also connect you with a lender, and we're gonna talk about working with a professional lender here in a moment, but that link can help you get connected to somebody that can guide you in the right direction. Now, we've talked about you know trying to find out what's important to the seller, and price is important, right? We, we wanna be competitive on the price, as I mentioned earlier in the video, and there is one thing you can do without offering your max amount up front, and that is doing an escalation clause. Now, earlier I mentioned escalation clause. Let's take a minute and talk about what it actually is. An escalation clause allows you to offer a price. Let's just say the purchase price of a property is 300,000, you're making your offer at 300,000, but in the back of your head you say, I'm willing to go to 310,000. That's my max, I really want that property, 310 is my max. You're able to make your offer up front at say 300,000, and do an escalation clause that says, hey, this is my offer at 300,000, but I'm willing to offer $500, 1,000, 2,000, whatever your number is above the highest offer up to $310,000 in this case. And you might say, why would I do that up front? Why don't I just wait for a counter offer and then come back with my highest price? Because you might not get a counter offer. In fact, the last three properties that I've listed, we haven't done a multiple counter offer to everyone. We've only countered the top offer or the top two offers just to clarify some terms in the contract. So if you wanna help your offer stand out, that escalation clause is a way to do it. Now, I am going to address the fact that you know, there are people out there that say, well, if you offer your, your 310 up front, they're going to always come back and say, well, we have an offer at that just so that they push their price to the max and that you're offering your 310,000. I will say that can happen, but typically what I do is I ask for proof of the highest offer as part of my escalation clause. So I would say, you know, I'm willing to offer 300,000 um, with $1,000 higher than the highest offer up to 310,000 with proof of your highest offer and they provide that offer, my client decides whether or not they want to move forward. Just because your offer gets accepted at 310 doesn't mean you have to move forward, especially if you don't trust that they actually have that offer. But I will say I've had escalation clauses come in on properties that I've listed, and they've asked for proof of the offer, and we've been able to provide enough information to show them that we did truly have that offer, and in no way did we actually you know, push them to their highest price without actually having it. In fact, I've represented many buyers where we've put in escalation clauses that never escalated. Our offer got accepted at our original price without the escalation. So you, know, you can always look at the negative side, the glass half empty, if you will, but the majority of agents out there are ethical and trying to do the right thing, and that escalation clause can help your offer stand out. The next thing you can do to help your offer stand out is shortening your escrow time period. So instead of doing a 30-day escrow, maybe you've talked to your lender, your lender says, hey, I can get your loan approved in 15 days. 
In fact, it's already approved. We just need the property, the contract, and, and we're ready to, to move on this thing. That can be something you can do to help your offer stand out is shortening that escrow time period. Another thing you can do is potentially shorten contingency periods, as I mentioned earlier. Instead of the standard contingency periods in the contract, you shorten them to a lesser time frame so that you get through your contracts, you get through your loan approval, any inspections quicker to show the buyer that you're serious in order to help your offer stand out. Another thing I like to do when writing offers for buyers is not ask for a bunch of stuff as part of the original contract. You know, if my client's interested in the refrigerator or maybe the washer and dryer, that's something that I might negotiate later in the contract. Um, you know, if especially if we're going to ask for a credit for repairs or something like that, I might build that into my request for repairs as something they can credit back to us. Also, I don't like asking for section one termite up front. I typically ask for that as part of the request for repairs. And another thing I like to do is pay for the home warranty for my buyers myself. Um, I know that's typically something that the sellers would pay, but you know, it's a four, five, six hundred dollar fee in many cases. And if that's a fee that the, the seller doesn't need to take on and I can pay for it, even though it's out of my pocket, that helps my client's offer stand out and puts them in a better position, maybe compared against other offers. And the very last thing you can do in order to help your offer stand out, now this is going to depend on where you're located in the country. There are states that don't allow this and certain agents that don't you know, want you to do this, but make a buyer letter. Have a buyer letter written out to the seller, letting them know what you liked about the property, a little bit about yourself. Leave the pictures out um, because you know typically you know the pictures are where you can get yourself in trouble because people can you know profile and that sort of thing, and that's why these aren't allowed. But let the seller know that you like the house, what you liked about it, you know maybe some of the upgrades they've done. Try to tie into the emotion of the seller right you know just like people buy emotionally so do people when they go to sell they, they sell emotionally it's an emotional process a lot of times they raise their kids in that house they raise their grandkids you know there there's things in that property that are special to them and if you can tie into that that could help your offer stand out that's also when you're walking through the property if you see something that relates to you keep that in mind and use that in the letter because i have had sellers accept offers that were less than other offers because of the letter that the buyer wrote to them. It meant something to them, it was important, it was emotional to them, and that helped their offer stand out and ultimately got them to the finish line. So hopefully that information was helpful, you know, guide you in the right direction when you're making offers, help your offer stand out. And if you've done something, maybe you've purchased a home in the past and you felt like there's something that you've done that that's helped your offer stand out, do me a favor, leave it in the comments below. Now, if you're watching this and still confused on how sellers might review offers, check out this video here. I dive into it in more detail. I actually take offers I've received from sellers, put them side by side, and show you exactly what people are doing in this market. So take a look at that. But for now, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate the support. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.